Yeah. Yeah, there's both of them, but I agree. Yeah. All right, so it is uh, 7 o'clock. So we will open up the June 27th Village Board meeting. Um, Carl, you want to help us with your sure. pleasure, sir? <laughs> To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Thank you. <coughs> all right, so let's uh, open up our public comment section. If anyone would like to have has a comment, please feel free to come with the podium. State your name and address. Black Tech. Oh, Actually, I don't know about Black um, So, uh, I wanted, just wanted to come up here tonight and um, I wanted to congratulate uh, Trustees um, uh, Julianti and Al Valcane on their re election and uh, say, look forward to working with you uh, in the next four years and I hope you have a good four years when it comes up. Um, I'm not going to talk about sewers tonight but, uh, because really what's the use right now that I know it'll be coming up and I hope to be able to talk to the board about it more as I do more research. I think a lot needs to come out about the issue, um, but uh, we've got plenty of time for that because there is no crisis. Um, and the second, the last thing I'd like to mention is that uh, I hope that uh, Mayor Byrts has a speedy recovery. Um, I know, Me you know, too. I know, Jerry, you had a great uh, vignette at the, at the last <coughs> village board meeting, but I hope his... Uh, his progress is doing well. I think I understand that he might even be walking. Yes, I saw. He was actually in the office today. He, he was, was in the office, office today. That's yes, awesome. He was so in the office. so yeah, I hope that he's sorry. watching and I hope that he's doing well and knows that a lot of people are praying for him and pulling for him and hope that he does and is back here as soon as but not that you're not that you're doing a great job. You are doing a great job. Thank you. Uh, but uh, I'd like to see him back here too. So thank you. Appreciate it. And thank you. Anybody else?
program in the uh, meters and that into that system. Okay. <coughs> okay, so if no more questions, I will ask for the resolution to approve the claims and warrants. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. <laughs> Trustee Lancy? Aye. Trustee Valido? Aye. Trustee Lauer? Aye. Motion passes. Financial statements. Yeah. <coughs> That's a question. Yes, sir. Uh, Jake? Yes, sir. Page three in the financial statements, uh, almost to the bottom, 512, Yeah, no, I just I, I wrote it down. Uh, I, I didn't have I think you're researching that right now. No, I don't have access to that. The 100 line is a labor line. Um, where are we? 870. So say street, what would you say? Street cleaning. Street cleaning personnel or just street cleaning? Street cleaning person. Yeah, so that's personnel. Okay, we have that page here. Oh, there it is. Is that due to the construction page? Yeah, that's, that's part of it, and that's, you know, the labor lines were estimating on the labor lines that they all work together. So usually at the end of the year, this is a year-end stuff for last year, so usually at the end of the year, the treasurer will say, all right, we got to, you know, we didn't snow plow as much, yeah. so we have yeah. we, we, we swept more and, and move things yeah. around. Okay. Yeah. Yep. 
how many of those signs do we have? The old signs. The old, the old street, street signs? signs? Yeah. Well, there, there, we have a constant stream of them, I guess. <laughs> we started swapping them out. So um, there's, well, we have a lot of the old white signs ah, and the new yeah. requirement to be, you know, switching over to those green yeah. signs unless we create a special district and have our special signs. And I don't think our white ones would still qualify. So we're not planning on selling old new stock and <coughs> when we take some out of out of service and we're okay. going to replace okay. those who have guys who are going to somehow mark the back of, you know, this was, you know, removed from service or somehow <laughs> clearly mark it so that uh, oh, yeah. it's, you know, I, I, I think about that because I went to a scrapyard a few years back and I saw a neighborhood watch sign somebody scrapped and that uh, was interesting. They went, took down the sign and scrapped it. It's kind of ironic. <laughs> Good. Yeah. All right. That's for a resolution to um, amend the 2019 fee schedule to include a five dollar fee for the purchase of a tired village street sign. Make that motion. Second. <coughs> Trustee Lansing? Aye. Trustee Lauer? Aye. Trustee Apolito? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. All right. So next, um, I'll be asking to get a resolution to set a public hearing. For local law number two of 2019 entitled the addition of no parking areas upon line drive Pritchard park and baker street and this will be held at, on july 25th 2019 at 7 15 p.m yes okay. I agree jake brought this to our attention we've already discussed it's a very good idea so I will ask for a resolution to set the public hearing. I'll make that motion. Trustee Lansing? I'm sorry, Trustee Lauer? Aye. Trustee Lansing? Aye. Trustee Polito? Aye. Motion passes. All right. So this is to dis kind of discuss here the memorandum of understanding the CSEA for sick time donation <coughs> policy. So I think, Jude, you wanted to discuss this further? Yes. Um, if I know we're just, we're, we're doing it for one individual. I wish we had more time to look at it. Um, I understand the circumstances, um, but I just wish we had more time to look at this. I know that we even talked about the office, maybe other people being involved in it. And uh, I guess I just wanted more. It's written well. So I, I think I just, yeah. in, in hindsight, I think part of the discussion is that if the, if you remove the, the MOU portion of it and let it down, because yeah. it just added it to the policy manual, it would apply across the board. Um, and it is, I guess it is done in response to a, a situation. It's probably something we should have looked at before and maybe had in place, but it is, um, it would apply to, you know, you know, obviously to everyone, but there's, seems like there's always, you know, we go to code school, there's those codes are there because something happened and then they write the codes. Unfortunately, I mean, it's, it's tough to be proactive all the time. And, you know, very often, as I said, most of the, the building codes are there because it's asked. There was a catastrophe here, or some yeah, because you know, something happened. Big major that. event. So, otherwise, that they amend building codes on two days' notice. No, they don't. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> three days, not two. Yeah, okay, three, three days. And, 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 and in fairness, <laughs> it isn't three days. One of the things we looked at our existing policies when this was coming to light. We looked at our existing policies to see if if they working within the existing policies if there was a way that people that wanted to contribute. Could contribute. Um, there's not a there's a, there's a provision in our vacation donation and loan policy where someone could donate vacation. Mm -hmm. um, but keep in mind, you know, here at the village, the we don't have disability insurance, um, mm -hmm. so people try to maintain a certain level of <coughs> paid leave off so that if there is something like this happens, they can they can take that time. Um, with the vacation, you can only roll over a certain portion of it every year, so you can't build up vacation sick time because of the 41J policy.
policy, that uh, retirement yeah. system that can get applied at the end of your career, a certain number of days, I think up to 165 days, can be applied towards your service credit. Um, so you were allowed to accrue over that over that time. Um, in fact, if you look at our sick time policy, um, the, the sick time, it's a sick time policy, you can get a, a sick time buyout after you accrue that basically 175 days or 165 days, it's like $1,700 a day. Um, and that's, Honestly, it's a pretty decent deal yeah. uh, as well for the village because the, the employees are able to cash those in at $100 per day of credit, and, and very often, mm -hmm. by the time they prove that much, their time's worth more than $100 per day. So, um, it, it, you know, that, in that regard, it benefits the village. And I just looked at, so, you know, it was a week, week and a half ago, and I started looking at different policies around to see how we could do this. I checked with NICOM to make sure first, mm -hmm. since sick time signed your retirement, to make sure that it was legal. I talked to the counsel at the uh, at NICOM. He sent me some information on what it represented a sick day. And I think that works good on a county level or a larger organization. I yeah, think in a smaller nice. village, yeah. we, even if everybody gave, you know, those typically allow you know, three or four days a year uh, to be deposited into it, and then you have opportunities later. I don't think it would add up. And the person that receives the sick time in the sick bank has to also participate in it. So they'd have to give up a little bit of time that they had or they wouldn't need the time. You know, so it's Well, uh, you did a lot of research then anyway. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, yeah. that's, yeah. that's what I wanted to hear. Yeah. No, it's um, yeah. probably too much if you guys know me. But yeah. I've no, I, I does think doesn't extensive in the BBC. More is better. I <laughs> <laughs> More is better. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah, it's, like I said, in hindsight, again, it's kind of like it's gone, but maybe without even not making an MOU, and if it was a policy change to the policy manual or an addition to the policy manual, it would apply across mm -hmm. the non union employees as well. <clears throat> so do you, do you think there should be anything in here? Um, about the employee being in good standings, there's disciplinary action going on, or I think there is. I think there is under the, the yeah. last one, I think, or the third yeah. one down, under the um, one section says that they can't be under suspension. Right. Yeah, I saw suspension, but um, also performance, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, not just suspension. Well, well, that's the donor. What about the donee? I think it says that they have to. It's a good point too, Don. They must be in. I don't know. Right. They have to be in good standing. I guess if they weren't in good standing, they wouldn't. You know, if they were suspended, I think in a suspension or something like that, you don't know, accrue sick time. So I'd have to look back through and see if that first one, the employee is eligible, so to all of their political uh, policies to earn sick time. So, but that's you know, that's a. Is there a remote chance that we could run out of those hours if there was a catastrophic call? Well, this is just a, it's simply a one, if one employee, the same kind of donation of one employee wants to donate time to another. And mm -hmm. the way I've tried to stay consistent with the vacation policy, location, or donation alone, where the, one, the donor employee's time would be monetized and then reverse back out to equal the recipient's hours, you know, based on their hourly rate. So if someone's making $20 an hour and they donate to somebody making $25 an hour, the village doesn't lose $5 an hour in every donation, or every hour that's donated. And the reverse, too, if someone's making $25 an hour and the recipient's making 20, they get an extra hour every four, because it doesn't cost the village anything, it's, it's the same monetarily. And I think one of the 
challenges of that. I mean, it would be, I guess, realistic. If I'm off without pay, I run out of time, I'm going to do everything I can do to get back. I mean, I'm going to do everything because my wife will be kicking me out of the house. <laughs> but I'll be doing anything, you know, to get back and, and maybe too early. And then we don't want yeah. an injury that happened outside of work. Someone tries to press it, comes back too early, re injures it at work. Now it's a work over workman's confidence yes. issue and not a just an injury that happened outside yeah. of work. So if we can you know, provide the time you know, and, and to convalesce, is that the right word? So, no. <laughs> so, Don, did you want any language change? I see you've got some writing on your paper. Well, yeah, as, it, as it was originally written, my understanding is the intent is that the employee's got to exhaust whatever um, leave they have, whether it's sick time, <coughs> time, I don't know if there's anything else. Well, if it's going to be a policy, there are certain employees that get count time, so they have to address that also. Yeah, and this doesn't refer to that. It doesn't specifically refer to that. So, no reason. I think I For changed example, it. Well, you just said all accrued leave. No, I changed it after you said that. I thought all what did you change it to? You added all of it. All accrued leave? No, I. Well, I never got. I never got an updated one. Did change it. It's not in the one that's in the back. I, I changed it twice, and I perhaps went back to the uh, <laughs> to the same <laughs> one. Um, and you take it from your most recent email, Dave. You well, you know what I did when I changed it based on your comments the first time, and added that definition in there to include sick time, vacation time, comp time, um, and then I think I added one of the things I wanted to say is too is that the serious health condition that is expected to result in absence of 30 days or more, including and you added those on there. Yeah. So I think it's you know if you're if you're out with the flu for a week and you didn't have enough time, it's a different exercise than you know hypothetically if somebody broke their leg and they're going to be out for 10 or 12 weeks, you know it's a different I think a different thing. So we said you know it should should be a serious thing that's going to take you out for 30 days. It's not mm -hmm. just you know. Yeah, the stomach bug or something. Um, but yeah, I, I absolutely I did change it, and then I changed the wrong copy, I guess, the second time. So you want to bring this back, or so? Or then, under guidelines, you say department heads shall verify the recipient's eligibility with satisfactory documentation. But you don't say what that documentation is. So my concern is, is it going to be un uniformly applied by the different <coughs> department heads? You could ask for something different than Heather, than Heather could ask for, which isn't fair. If you look at, I mean, I didn't go through that Yates County sick bank carefully, but I did look at the, the sick bank for the unified court system in New York State, mm -hmm. and they sp specify what you need to submit in order to, in their case, borrow from the sick bank. You need you need something from the doc from a doctor saying yeah. saying that you're going to be out for 30 days or more. So Jake, do you think you can make those changes and, and yeah. we can do this on a workshop July 2nd, which is just next week? Hey, right. yep. whatever you guys, whatever yeah. you guys want. If that works for you. And then send, send us your latest draft. If it's something that incorporates one. Are you guys okay with that? All the yeah, changes no, in one? Yeah. <laughs> one. Um, so I'll, I'll ask. But if you look at that, I told you that. Yeah, it was. If that part 135 or something, you can, it's 22 and uh, it's, it's the, if you just Google the, whatever I said in my email to you, it'll, it'll come up. Okay. And then you'll see <coughs> the documentation that they asked for. It's pretty, mostly it's, but they want something from a doctor. I was trying to take it on two pages because Don usually says I've come long winded. Well, I just think, you know, <laughs> that's thing. Well, I mean, so this, whole, paper this whole thing is, <laughs> this whole thing is triggered by a serious health condition. So yeah. you want yeah. someone yeah. that knows what a serious health condition is to tell you that this person has a serious health condition. Alright, so I'm going to ask for a motion to table this to the workshop of July 2nd. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Sure. Okay. Thank you. <coughs>
Trustee Lancey? Yeah. Trustee Lauer? Aye. Trustee Polito? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. All right. So, a resolution to authorize DPW Superintendent yes. Jake Swimley to replace truck W15. Yes. <laughs> what are you going to replace it with? You got a photo of it? <laughs> I was afraid of breaking the camera. <laughs> um, it's, a, uh, it's a CB 515. <coughs> the quotes. Um, it's off of the Onondaga County bid for the vehicle. It's an inter international. Um, it's a newer type international. It's like a uh, almost like a pickup truck cab on a larger chassis that we're going to have a landscape box on the back. But 15s are smaller dump truck that's basically like a landscape truck. So that's what we're doing on this. All together, it is 82, I wrote it on here, $82,906.95. Yeah. yeah, we had $150,000, not in for vehicles, not just for vehicles. Yeah. Can I drive it? No. Did you want to up your new car? And what do we get with, <laughs> what do you think we get for W15? I'm guessing 4,500 to 5,500 somewhere in there. Um, you know, when we were doing going through the budget process, I, I looked at W15, W1, W2 as a replacement schedule this year. Um, and in the sewer side, there was a van replacement and we also talked about a van and a mower um, and another mower replacement here. So all together, I think it was like a $93,000 expected revenue coming back um, on some of those things. I want to say 93, but it's, I don't know, once, but, um, you know, it's because the W1 and W3, or W2 aren't that old. That's one of them's a regular, regular cab pickup truck and the DPW truck, and one of them's a flatbed. Um, <coughs> Those aren't that old, but that's part of our vehicle rotation policies to try to keep them in a three-year um, time frame so we don't have any maintenance costs on those. And I just saw one just like our W1 at the auction in May, and it, I think it was $31,000 it went for. Um, we're close to 30 or 31, and I think we paid 28 plus whatever the file was for. So, you know, even if it's, you know, $2,000 difference, we can have a truck for a thousand bucks a year with no maintenance costs, we're doing pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. So you got to order this truck or it's in stock? No, they've got to be ordered. Uh, we, <coughs> you guys say yes, then we'll have it in December. Okay. So if I can ask everybody at this uh, the table, if that's what we want to call it, bench, whatever you want to call it, to speak in your mic, we're getting some comments on Facebook that people cannot hear us. So oh. please try to speak in your mics. That'd be greatly appreciated. Okay. Carl, I, I cut yours because it's acting up, so, except for Carl. Except for Carl. Now here's Carl. Now here's Carl. We'll share. Yeah, you guys can share. <clears throat> All right, so, um, <clears throat> huh? these were competitively bid, you know, like I said, on the Onondaga and the Onondaga. Onondaga for the truck and Onondaga County bid for the uh, box. So okay. it's going to be two separate POs. They're going to marry them together down in Tenville and Lima. All right. I'm going to ask for a motion for Mr. Swinley. I'm going to make that motion. Yeah. Okay. Trustee Lauer? Aye. Trustee Lansing? Aye. Trustee Polito? Aye. Motion passes. Okay. Thanks, Jake. Go do it. Yes, so, thank you. But also, I'll be assigning whatever necessary things. Yes, sir. I like this whole equipment maintenance thing that we set up a few years back. It's really working. Yeah, yeah. Really thank, thank you. Thank you. I think we're hopefully getting on the right side mm -hmm. of investing in, yeah. it was a good move. in stuff that we can use rather than stuff we can fix. Great. Don, your chair. Um, <laughs> what do you want to do with the wireless communication uh, facility? Yeah. With, uh, Did one, one thing, two, and two different places. Did everyone review it? I looked it over again. And what's your thoughts? Um, I don't think I, I, I know my comment. Yeah. Because I didn't. Yeah. You didn't look at it? I 
tried to run with it, but I didn't. I just not well. You know, it's going to be here. I know. I mean, it's, it's already here. And, you know, there's there's mm -hmm. two locations. Um, one's on top of uh, the bridal shop. You know, <coughs> and one at the corner for morning. Yeah. And, Corning and Sanford is one. Yes. And so they're going to start, you know, going by approval. A lot of these are going to start coming in. I don't think that, uh, you know, they're not quite as unsightly as uh, an antenna on everybody's roof the way it was in the 50s, you know. And uh, I, I think that we have to go forward with this. Yes. In order to allow our, our village to stay up to date technology, technologically. Well, we do. I just want all the words right. We just I, I, to get yeah. ourselves stuck. We get a few contracts and get them that way. I had a problem with the mounting on the poles and all yeah. that. And uh, um, Mr. Kuhn answered those questions. Mm -hmm. uh, Could somebody explain to me the, the, the waiver? That portion of it that was added to it, just a quick overview of what. So that was down, right? What was your suggestion? So they got to come to the board. That, that, that was at the suggestion of Mike Coon from Verizon. Mm -hmm. that as it sits now, the, 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 it had an absolute prohibition on any tower based wireless communication facility, it couldn't be constructed on or within 50 feet of. Where, where all the utilities are located underground. Okay. And he was like, well, what if that's the only place you can put one? And if you can't put so, and if you can't put it there, residents around there or businesses are gonna be, mm -hmm. not gonna be, oh, sure. so there was no mechanism for, uh, for in essence, like a variance or whatever to be granted to it. And it made no sense to go to the zoning board that meets once a month mm -hmm. because there's a 60 days you got to approve or deny these things within 60 days. Yes. So there's not enough time for them to come to two different boards. Right. So hence, I suggested, well, let's just put this general language in that subject to a public hearing, the board can entertain an application for a waiver of that that specific requirement and the other absolute prohibition was any tower base within a, a front yard of any structure. Now, I don't know if oh. there might be a circumstance where that's the only place one can go. And if the property owner doesn't mind it and it's okay, mm -hmm. shouldn't there be a way to vary the requirement? Okay. No, it just so it's similar to uh, justifying coverage. Like when they used to come before the board and they'd say we would require them in part of their application to require or excuse me to, to provide uh, justification that the area needed the coverage for mm -hmm. those particular antennas so something similar to that I guess. Well the local law already also requires them to prove the necessity yeah. the need for the mm -hmm wherever it is, mm -hmm. this would be yes. in addition to that. Mm -hmm. And it's just for good cause shown. So if they, they basically have to show they can't put it anywhere else that is feasible. Sure. There's going to be challenges, for sure. I'm sure there will be. Is that good? If you could win. If the, oh, yeah. If there there will be challenges. <laughs> for that. Oh, yeah, sure. I'm the one that has to read it. <laughs> Yeah, that's why you I mean, the best yeah, I mean, we can make the language the better yeah, off we're yeah. going to be. Pictures, I like pictures, you know. <laughs> and I think Don brought it up tonight because the language changed, so you have to set another public hearing, right? Yeah. Now. Right. Yeah. And and as Carl mentioned, you know, they're already making applications, and so mm -hmm. it doesn't, you know, to just keep not doing anything or kicking this down the road doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Yeah, you're going to get a wave of these things. You know, I think, sure. I think that as, as it's now drafted, sure. I think it's, I think it's a pretty good local law and I think it, with the waiver requirement, if, if a carrier you know, challenged it, I think it would survive any kind of challenge. Because there are no outright prohibitions. So my, 
My thought then is just like uh, when a zoning board makes a decision, they have to um, provide language that says this is why we came to this decision mm -hmm. so that if it ever does go to court and is challenged, we have something in writing saying this is our our justification for why we decided this way. Exactly. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. After the public hearing, the board would have to have certain findings to, mm -hmm. to, to support why they are granting a waiver. But when, you know, when, when you come up with your application, that <laughs> and if they're seeking, if they're seeking a, a waiver, mm -hmm. have the applicant set forth the reasons why they believe. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's necessary it. first. Yeah. So at least the board's got something to go on then yeah. when they appear in front of them. I can tell you. Similar to the zoning board application. Mm -hmm. you have to, sure. You know, so you're going to have to. Well, <laughs> not that I want to make work for you. Well, I'm sure there's too. something out there. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm yeah, going to keep going. We'll have to reinvent the wheel. There you go. Now, would it make sense to consider the board passing? Passing it as it was written and then amending it, or is that kind of disingenuous when you know you're going to change it in another board meeting or have another public hearing and add amend it to add the waiver provision or the other amendment that was there? Is that just well, I don't think it makes sense. that makes a lot of sense because <coughs> any local law isn't effective until it's filed with the Secretary of State, right. actually 20 days after it's filed with the Secretary mm -hmm. of State. So I'm going to have the clerk file this one, it takes 20 days, and probably within that 20 days you have the amendment done, yeah. it just, yeah, all right. Okay. I think you just do it all at once. The seeker's all done, although we have to, the board still has to take the resolution, go through the, the, um, the, uh, part two, the part two that, that, that Will has already prepared, and, um, and all the notices are done to the county, and the, to the town of Webster and the town of Penfield. So yeah, you just got to let them know when the date is. That's yeah. all. You don't have to do anything with the county. <clears throat> you want to send a notice to the PT. He's got to be All right, so then Carl's got something. Yeah, and uh, having, you know, I always tell you about this, but after 33 years of working with that stuff, Verizon is a, a very reputable company, but when they begin to do something like this, I just said before that Will is going to get a wave of applications. Mm -hmm. And they'll start work before those applications are approved. Now, Will and then you do have a recourse yes. stop, uh, stop work order, right? I mean, that's the kind of challenge that you're going to face. Because yeah. I, I did it. I know it. Sure. All right, so with that being said, what I'm going to do then is probably ask the board for a resolution um, for the Village of Webster Board of Trustees to set a public hearing regarding the adoption of local law number one of 2019 that amends and adds certain sections to the zoning code to establish certain general and specific requirements <coughs> for wireless communication facilities. And we will do this on the July 25th at 7.30 since we have the first one at 7.15. Does that work for everybody? Yeah. 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 <coughs> yeah, that's six, seven, fifteen. Yeah. Sure. But our first one is one This is one that I lost for motion for this. I'll make them up. What? And just, just as an aside, I got an email late this afternoon from Mike Kuhn who said he, he, he was checking the agenda for the village board and he saw the, the I guess the, the, the motion to adapt the seeker. So he wanted to know, does this mean they're adapting the local law? Paying attention and you know they're
I will. Thank you. So I was gone for a few weeks. Uh, two weeks for our denomination, our annual conference, and then uh, one week for actually having somewhat of a vacation. Uh, and so Jake did a fantastic job in my absence. Um, so what you see here is basically a majority of what Jake did while I was gone. Uh, I guess the only thing I would really highlight are, well, two things. Uh, number one, typically uh, when it comes to permits, we do an average of 110, 120 a year. Town probably does like four or 500, something like that. But if you look at the ratio, it's pretty good. Uh, we're in probably 85 <coughs> permits right now. Already. Already. So we're well on our way to going breaking the 110 mark. Mm -hmm. So that's a positive thing. Uh, 28 Seneca Street, I, I guess we'll highlight that. That one has been a thorn in our side for a little while. Yes. Um, and Jake has done a great job uh, trying to communicate with the bank and the bank communicating bank and then trying to communicate with the property maintenance company. And so, uh, long story short, we did mow the front of the property. But the back is, is gated in. And, uh, I guess the bank sent a plea out for us to wait on that and they would try and get a company in there so they put out a work order. So we gave them until tomorrow I think it is to do that. If they don't then we're going to have to take care of it. The problem with high grass, a lot of people don't realize it's number one, people think of rodents, right? So yeah, and that's a big one. So you get vermin that like to hide in there. And so the field mice, all these other creatures start to uh, accumulate. Secondly, now with uh, we're in tick season, you know, that might be a little low on the list, but it is pretty bad. But really, uh, I think the greatest danger is when the grass dries, it becomes a fire hazard. So for us, that's a major thing. So we, we try and take care of that. And again, we understand um, this year has been fairly rainy, and a lot of people have been, some of them, you know, depending on the work schedule, had a difficult time keeping up with their lawn. Mm -hmm. But nine out of ten times, we'll send a letter and then it gets mowed, you know, so. Oh, we had the same situation with that property on Main Street. And we couldn't get anything done and take oh, care of it. Oh, yeah. That was the bank and the whole. Oh, yeah, yeah. And um, this is no yeah. exception. Again, it's going into foreclosure. So yeah. we just left it and yeah. there it is. Um, one other thing, I guess. Um, so I, I thought 7-Eleven was gone. You know, I didn't realize they were, you know, because a lot of them were closing. Well, on North Avenue, what used to be Sunoco is now becoming 7-Eleven. So they did all the remodeling in there. They changed all yeah. the signs and everything. But also, um, Charlie Fitzsimmons' properties over there, mm -hmm. um, he's getting really close to being full. Um, oh, I know. I was fronts. in that new dress shop. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. you really have to go see that one. And tomorrow we're doing a C of O for a blowout studio. Now, mm -hmm. uh, it has nothing to do with C4. <laughs> um, apparently, there's a thing where if a, if a guy or a woman wants to have their hair done without being cut, just to have it set for like a wedding or a special event or something mm -hmm. like that, yeah. that's a thing. I didn't know it was a thing. Yes, it is. It's a thing. So, I basically went to a blow off. <laughs> 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 Same here. He went to yeah, so, and um, I did, they did, uh, as soon as they're done with this one, they're going to be concentrating on JoJo's to get that finished. Yeah. Because yeah. that's like wrapping that up. And then he approached me recently on the pink building there that used to be the little bakery thing and, and what they're going to yeah. do with that. Um, so, and. What are they doing with it? I don't know yet, and they don't know yet. And I think they, they still want to have the apartment above, which is good. Yeah. Um, but they were talking about the stairs in between. And there was a question as to whether the music store owner, you know, John Bucci, yeah. whether he owned it or whether it's Charlie. So I said, I, how about this? I said, I'm going to give you um, John's contact information. Why don't you go ahead and talk to him? Yeah. You guys, you know, work this out and stuff like that. And to Charlie's credit, that's what he did. And John said he's, he was very, very... Uh, amiable and wonderful to talk to. He is. He's a good so, person. Yeah. He is, is doing wonders for the East End. Oh, uh, Chandelier's Boutique. <gasps> I love that place. 
Okay. <laughs> well, there you go. There's one thumbs up for Facebook. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah, well, and Jake, thank you for doing all job. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and again, it looks like we're out of time. Um, Curtis <laughs> 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 Park. <laughs> um, Curtis Park and uh, Woodstone Circle, the gutter replacements are coming along. Um, again, the people have been great to work with. Uh, very uh, helpful in moving the vehicles and getting those out of the way. We're also doing a little section on Ann and uh, Champion Ave. Um, and see as how you guys like having public hearings and shows <laughs> and such. Um, I did get a call from the school resource officer. Um, we've been talking to the school about they have an interest in adding a no right turn at Sanford Street at South Avenue on school days. Um, basically in the morning when the kids are walking and in the afternoon when the kids are going home. So um, I'm just trying to finalize some uh, hours with them and see what they want and then they'll forward it on to Don. And sure, we can do that the 25th too. Yeah. Um, I feel they'll have that. Um, uh, so I, I have to have it to be about the 23rd of that, right? <laughs> so, yeah. I have another one though. Um, Arrow, as you know, uh, coming in and out off the main street mm -hmm. into the, could we kind of put arrows so that people are, they go in and out the wrong way all the time. They, they finally figured out that they can't turn left, but it's, it's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, we, we have, we can apply arrows. Um, can we put them even on the? Yeah, we put them on the, on the pavement. Okay. Um, but in, in fairness. I, I know. No matter what's there, they kind of. In fact, that's why I was late tonight. We had somebody unfortunately wipe out one of our uh, hot planters on the median on North Avenue. Oh, gee. Um, well, he was avoiding another car was running the red light. He was avoiding that, swerved into the planter, um, and kind of blew it up. But while we we're standing there, I was getting ready to leave. I was just going to tell the police officer showed up. I was going to tell him that the village is on the way to clean up the stuff. So um, the phone didn't ring during the meeting and. An elderly gentleman turned and went the wrong way on 104. So I'm trying to, hey, there's a guy driving the wrong way. So they went back, but we found that he uh, stopped and turned around and came back up. So oh, it was an interesting. So, yeah, there's a lot of arrows and signs there. And I know. <laughs> Where's the Indian? What's that? Arrows, Indians. Where's the Indian? Oh, no. no. Oh, so. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it. And thank you for the vehicle. We will treat it nice. And thank you for all your help. Is that it? Yeah. Oh, don't even say that. Okay. Um, so, I think Kevin had some public announcements. RJ, did you guys want to talk about her? Remind people about the carnival in three years. Oh, yeah, they, oh, yeah, it's, well, we're going to have a workshop before then, but the, I have to look it up. The parade is the second week. 6.30, I'm the bottom. I'm, okay. <laughs> no, so 6.30, I, I never get to watch the parade. I'm not making pizzas, so. The, the are are they going to have the party at your house? Uh, every, every time I leave, I think they do, so. <laughs> <You know, it's, laughs> we got our chairs up there, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. But the, yeah, the parade, you know, it starts Wednesday night and Thursday night is the big parade. Yeah. Uh, Friday night, um, there's all sorts of different things going on in the, in the fire department yeah. website. has all the information. I believe the kitty parade is Saturday again, Saturday. like they did it a couple years ago. So, yes. Thank you. All right, so well, next, well, next meeting to the <laughs> board workshop will be July 2nd. Um, and I believe that time has changed to 6.30 yeah. um, for this meeting. Um, next village board meeting is, just the, is July 25th because the yeah. July 9th uh, board meeting has been canceled. Yeah. Good. <coughs> Good. Anyone else have anything to let yeah. share? You do? We were at the, uh, the concert Friday. Did you, did you call? Yeah, I'm asking that uh, the bid put their uh, concert tonight sign out on North Avenue because there was maybe 20 people there. And the yeah, guy was pretty good. Seven, huh? And uh, it was 
And we never heard anything. We just came by and saw the guy sitting on the stage. So Seriously. the bid used to put a sign out on North Avenue that said concert tonight. It's on my to-do list tomorrow, I promise. I'll, I don't recall, honestly, if, uh, a sign like that, but we could you know, we can look at we're going to get in the A-frame. We put out one every mm -hmm. Thursday for the Village Band yeah. down at Phillips Road. And that's yeah. the only concert. I think right. that would be a good thing to do, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it was, it, the guy was really good, too. But, you know, no one knew but if, if they don't know, I think the bigger thing is we have to get the message out to people that it's happening. And if it, it's not, you know, they don't know the big website or anything else, so how do we do it? Can we put it on ours? We have it on ours. We do? Mm -hmm. All the big? The concert schedule, we keep up with that. Yeah. And then we, um, so we get some calls and we got some flyers and we actually mail them out to people who asked to. So. Good. Okay. Can we do like a banner down at the park? Uh, whatever is most effective. Well, I mean, this would be, and we don't advertise for the bid, right? The bid right. advertise for the right. council. This is a conversation that probably we should have with the bid. Well, well every point Heather's going to talk to, uh, um, yeah. Right. Yeah. Sure, Ben. But I think because they're quasi the governmental thing. A frame. Um, a frame out to the road. Well, I miss, remember when we used to be able to put it on the bridge? That was like the best advertising ever. Yes. Mm -hmm. I would be out there fighting traffic. So we stopped that. Uh, the state. They did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, if nobody has anything else, I'll ask for a motion to close in. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Thank you. All in favor? All right. Aye. Thank you, sir. You're doing a fine job, by the way, Jim. Thanks, Judy. That really means a lot. I'm going to hurt you. <laughs> but you are. I appreciate what you're doing.